Hello and welcome to a Spree Spirit tutorial on the parts of a gravity davit and an open lifeboat. By the end of this tutorial, you should be able to state the nautical terms for the parts of the davit and the lifeboat, as well as state the purpose of some of the parts of the davit and the lifeboat. This photograph shows an open lifeboat stored in the davit with the cover on, as it would be on a ship at sea. This view is of the lifeboat as it would appear from on board the ship carrying it. Let's have a look at some of the parts of the lifeboat in the davit. Starting at the bottom right hand corner, instructions for launching survival craft should always be posted near to the survival craft for reference. When we do routine maintenance, we must be careful not to paint over these signs. If we see these signs even partially obscured, we should report it as a defect. Here is a close-up of the launching instructions for the training lifeboat. Be sure you get familiar with the instructions for all survival craft on your vessel. If any of the launching instructions on your vessel are not displayed or not readable, report it to the safety representative. Let's look at the middle of this picture. Sometimes the open lifeboat is fitted with a tarpaulin cover to protect the boat's equipment and contents. Such a tarpaulin cover would most likely be supported by a strong back. This cover has to be removed before the lifeboat can be prepared for launching. Up at the top of this photo, we see the davit span wire slung between the davit heads. The purpose of the davit span wire is to support the man ropes. The man ropes are used to stabilize and support the persons in the lifeboat during preparation for launching and actual launching. In this photo, the man ropes are stowed as they would be when the vessel is at sea. They must be stowed in a way that they can be unfurled quickly if they are required in an emergency. This photo shows the view you would see after you've climbed up to the David platform just before you remove the tarpaulin cover and strong back. At the top middle of this photo, we see the David Falls passing through an opening in the tarpaulin cover. The falls are the wire that the lifeboat is suspended from the David during stowage launching and recovery of the lifeboat. We will see soon that the white patent chain in this photo is connected to a block at the end of that wire. In the middle right of this photo, we see one of the gripes passing through an opening in the tarpaulin cover. The purpose of the gripes are to hold and secure the lifeboat in the davit when the lifeboat is in the stowed position. We will see a lot more of the gripes soon. In the top right hand corner, we are seeing part of the tricing pendant. The tricing pendant reduces how much the lifeboat will swing when it is being lowered between the stowed position and the davit and down to the embarkation deck. We will get a better look at the tricing pendant later on. In this photo, we are standing on the embarkation deck and looking up at the bottom of the lifeboat. We can see the fastenings for the tarpaulin cover are still in place. We can see that the lifeboat is fitted with a drain. The drain is left unplugged at sea, so any rain or sea water that gets past the tarpaulin cover will run out of the boat. We don't want the boat and its equipment to get damaged by the effect and weight of accumulated water in the boat. Here we can see the lifeboat's drain hole from inside the boat. We can see that the drain is set into the keel of the boat. Shipping or inserting the plug is the first priority when the tarpaulin cover has been removed in order to prepare the lifeboat for launching for a drill or a real emergency. Notice that the drain plug is secured to the boat. That is to help us not to lose it. Lifeboats are supposed to have two plugs per drain hole. This lifeboat also has a rubber bung that can be used to plug the lifeboat's drain. Let's take another look 
at the lifeboat and David in the stowed position, but this time with the tarpaulin cover removed and from the outboard or seaside. We still see that span wire slung between the David heads and supporting the man ropes. In this picture, the man ropes have been uncoiled from the stowed position and are laying in the boot. Do you notice the figure of eight knots in the man rope? Here we see the gripes highlighted. The gripes are used to secure the lifeboat in the stowed position in the davit. It is usually a wire arrangement that passes around the lifeboat and is fastened to three or more points on the davit. The gripes are usually wires sheathed in rubber to protect the lifeboat hull and to reduce corrosion damage of the gripes. In this type of gravity davit, we see the false block hard up against the davit head when the lifeboat is in the stowed position. There is a length of heavy chain extending the falls between the falls block and the hook in the lifeboat. After the gripes are removed and the winch brake lifted, the falls wire comes off the winch drum, passes through the falls block, allowing the boat to be lowered. Grab lines are fitted to the lifeboat to assist survivors in the water to hold on to the boat, for example, if the boat is already filled to capacity. Solus requires all life-saving appliances to be fitted with retroreflective material. Retroreflective material does not only make the life-saving appliance a better light reflector, but also a better radar reflector. The photograph here shows fenders just below the lifeboat's gunwale. These fenders protect the lifeboat when it comes into contact with the ship's side during launching and recovery at drills. The exhaust of the lifeboat's motor is also shown. The keel is the foundation or the spine of the boat. It strengthens the boat's structure. The bilge rail has a dual purpose. As a bilge keel, it does a little to dampen the rolling of the lifeboat in a seaway. The second purpose is to assist with righting the boat if it is capsized. This photo also shows the davit winch on the right and the limit switch on the left. We will see both in better detail later. Just above the davit base on the left is a turnbuckle. This tain buckle is used to increase the tension in the gripes. Remember, the gripes hold the lifeboat in the davit when the ship is at sea. We should check these turn buckles before and after the ship experiences heavy weather. On the right side of the photo, although it's not clear, there's a shackle on the winch for the forward bows and tackle. Another name for a turn buckle is a bottle screw. The base of the davit is shown at the bottom of this photo. This is an important area to be inspected as it is the foundation of the davit and must be in good condition to support launching the lifeboat in very bad weather. In this photo, the lifeboat is still in the stowed position in the davit. We are looking at the aft end of the lifeboat. This photo introduces the puddinins. The puddinins are wooden blocks. In this case, they are covered in fabric. As we tighten the turnbuckles on the gripes, we are in fact squeezing the lifeboat between the gripes and the puddinins. So the materials of the puddinins and the rubber sheath on the gripes reduce the damage to the boat as we secure it. The gudgeon is where we hang the lifeboat's rudder when it is in use. We previously saw that the bilge rail helps us to hang on to the lifeboat or to right the lifeboat if it capsizes. We also saw the keel that helps us to steer the lifeboat and provide strength and rigidity to the hull. In this photo, we are getting a look at one of the gripes that holds the boat secure in the stowed position in the davit. 
The gripe passes from the davit, around the boot, then around the sheave to a pelican hook. This pelican hook is the device we use to release the gripes when we are preparing to launch the boot. Just before where the gripe is secured to the davit base, we can see the turnbuckle that is used to tighten the gripes when we are securing the life boot at sea. Three other features to note in this photo. The ladder on the left is used to access the davit platform where we go to remove the tarpaulin cover and the strong back and enter the lifeboat to ship the plug. Just left and below center of the photo is the davit limit switch. This switch cuts off the winch motor when we are hoisting the boat back into the stowed position. This cutoff protects the lifeboat and the davit as they do not come into hard contact with each other. The boat has to be wound home by hand and on the bottom right we get a better look at that pad eye for the aft bowsing tackle. Here we are seeing a close-up of one of the gripes after it has passed around the lifeboat and it passes over the sheave before going down to the pelican hook used to release it. In this photo we can also see the lifeboat's keel and the fastenings for the lifeboat cover. This photo shows the device that releases the gripes. The device is most commonly called a pelican hook. It is sometimes also called a Senhau slip. On the right of this photo we can see the turnbuckle for one of the gripes holding the lifeboat in the davit in the stowed position. This turnbuckle is used to increase or reduce tension in the gripes before or after heavy weather. The turnbuckle is below the gripe releasing pelican hook and is between the pelican hook and the pad eye at the base of the davit. At the bottom of this photo we can see the winch brake handle. When the handle is lifted the brakes are released and the weight of the lifeboat and the force of gravity lowers the lifeboat. If the handle is allowed to return to the original position the winch brake is reapplied and the lifeboat stops being lowered. Here we see the winch from a slightly different angle and with the winch brake handle highlighted for reference. The falls are another important part of the mechanism used to lower and hoist the lifeboat in the davit. One end of each of the falls is attached to the davit by a turnbuckle. The other end of the falls, as shown in this picture, is attached to a winch drum. When the lifeboat is in the stowed position, most of the falls is on the winch drum. When we lift the brake, the winch drum is allowed to turn and the falls wire pays out and the lifeboat is lowered on the bite of the falls via some type of block or release mechanism. This picture shows the sheaves at the head of the davit. There are sheaves on both sides of the davit head. We can see the falls hard up against the davit head when the lifeboat is in the stowed position. At the bottom, we can see where the falls are anchored to the davit. We saw in an earlier slide that one end of the falls is on a drum at the winch and we just saw the other end of the falls anchored to the davit. With both ends of the falls secured, it follows that the lifeboat is lowered and hoisted on the bite of the falls over a series of sheaves. It is important to check that all of the sheaves, including the sheave inside the falls block, are turning when the boat is being lowered and or hoisted. Because turning sheaves reduce friction and wear on the falls. The green arrows in this diagram show some of the parts of the falls that move during the lowering and hoisting of the lifeboat. This picture highlights the wires in this photo that are not part of the falls. We can see the span wire supporting the man ropes and at the bottom, just right of center, we can see part of the tricing pendant. Let's take a look around the lifeboat. We have seen some of these things earlier in the tutorial. Just below the gunwale, we can see the grab lines that would assist the survivors in the water. 
Just above the gunwale on the right of the photo, we can see one of the rullocks. The rullocks are the crutches that the oars rest in when the boat is being rowed. Again, below the gunwale, we can see some of the retroreflective tape that reflects light intensely and also enhances the boat's chances of being detected by radar. On the right, we can see one of the fenders. The fenders protect the lifeboat from damage. Let's take a look at inside the boat. We have seen some of these things earlier in the tutorial. On the left, we can see the end of one of the folds attached to the hook at the forward end of the lifeboat. At the top of the photo, we can see the man ropes that persons in the lifeboat would use to steady themselves if the boat was being prepared or launched in rough weather. Let's take a closer look at the part of the falls inside the lifeboat. We get a close-up of some of the parts we've seen already. We can see the part of the falls attached to the lifting hook of the lifeboat. We can see one of the gripes used to wrap around the boat and hold it in the davit in the stowed position. We can also see the trison pendant, including the pelican hook used to release the trison pendant from the falls. This picture shows us the shackle used to secure the tricing pendant to the falls. In this picture, we can see the lifeboat lifting hook and the handle for removing and replacing the falls from and to the lifting hook. In this picture, we have highlighted the shackle that connects the bows and tackle to the falls. You will remember that the other end of the bowsing tackle is connected to a shackle at the base or near the base of the davit. When both ends of the bowsing tackle are in place and the boat has been bowsed into the embarkation deck, the bowsing line is secured to the cleats like the one shown here. There is a tricing pendant between each davit head and the end of the falls at each end of the boat. The tricing pendant is used to reduce or dampen the swinging of the lifeboat as it is lowered or hoisted between the stowed position and the embarkation deck. The tricing pendants are fitted with a pelican hook for releasing them. When the lifeboat has been lowered to the embarkation deck, a bowsin tackle or bowsin gear is rigged between the base of each end of the davit and the end of the falls at each end of the boat. The bows and tackle is used to hold the lifeboat alongside the ship to allow loading of survival equipment and extra rations as well as the boarding of persons at the embarkation deck. This photo shows us the terms for the seats in the lifeboat. At the top right, we can see the stern sheets. The stern sheets are the aftermost seating in the lifeboat. This is where the coxswain or the person in charge of the lifeboat sits. In the middle of the photo we can see thwarts and side benches. The thwarts lie across the boat from starboard to port. The rowers or oarsmen sit on the thwarts. The side benches lie along the port and starboard sides and run forward to aft. The passengers and persons not rowing sit on the side benches. There is storage space for the lifeboat's equipment and buoyancy chambers under the side benches. There is more storage space under some of the thwarts and in the bow of the boat. We can see that there is storage space under the forward thwart of this lifeboat and the watertight cover to the storage compartment is visible. There are some open lifeboats that have fittings for sails. Here we can see the supports for a mast and in the same photo we can see the figure of eight knots in one of the man ropes. In this photo we have highlighted the engine casing for the lifeboat's motor and the associated fuel tank and the engine exhaust with lagging. In this photo the lifeboat has been launched and only the davit can be seen. Let us recap some of the parts of the davit. 
here we see again the span wire that supports the man ropes. The man ropes are there to support persons in the boot when the boot is being lowered or hoisted. Here we have highlighted the davit head with the nearby arrows pointing to the davit head sheaves. We have also highlighted the falls and the falls blocks. On the left we have highlighted some more of the davit's features. At the top is the harbour pin. When the ship is in port, the harbour pins are used to secure the inboard lifeboat in such a way that it cannot be accidentally launched and damaged by striking the key or jetty. Next we see one of the gripes where it has been stowed out of the way and we can see the David winch motor and just below that the limit switch that we are going to discuss shortly. In the center and on the left of this photo we see the pudding ins. The pudding ins are wooden chucks that the lifeboat is held against when the lifeboat is in the stored position. At the bottom middle we can see one of the tricing pendant and at the bottom left we can see one of the bows and tackles. After the drill has been completed and the lifeboat is to be hoisted, the falls have to be placed in the lifting hooks and the boat can be hoisted under power. The location of the switch for hoisting this davit is shown in this diagram. The lifeboat and davit are hoisted with the winch motor until the davit's legs come into contact with the davit limit switch. The limit switch shuts off the winch motor when the lifeboat is about 25 centimeters from the stored position. When the lifeboat is being returned to the stored position, the limit switch stops the winch and the boat has to be hoisted manually to the final storage position. The winch hoisting handle is like a wheel spanner used for slacking off nuts on a tire. The spanner is removed from the stored position and placed on the winch hoisting nut and turned by hand to complete hoisting the boat. Here the green line shows us where the winch hoisting handle is removed from its stored position and fitted to the winch hoisting nut for the manual part of the hoisting and stowing. We appreciate that you chose to spend some of your valuable time in our learning zone. We hope you found the experience beneficial.